Hey physics students, this is Mr. Gloria coming at you. Hey, today I wanted to show you um, uh, for one of our assignments for projectile motion, I wanted to show you um, how to use one of the FET simulations. And I'm going to create a couple of assignments using this uh, simulation program. And in this first assignment, we're going to uh, just look at type 1 trajectories. Again, those are trajectories kind of like did like that, just half of a parabola. Second assignment, we'll look at um, a full symmetric type 2 trajectory. Now, I'm going to have both kind of programs open on the same screen, so I'm going to kind of get rid of, I'm going to kind of get rid of um, my picture here so I can have the full setup. Let me see if I can do that. I may need to stop the recording. Uh, let me just see here. So let me hit stop. Okay, I've kind of stopped my little picture there, and I want to come back now to the video. We said we wanted to kind of play around with this this simulation, and so let me just kind of start fresh here. So um, I'm going to close down the software, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to try to work in dual screen mode with my home computer, and I'm going to copy this into another Google um, window here and so let me go ahead and do that and let me go ahead and try this I'm going to try to put this on the right side I'm going to put this on the left side so here's the document that I've provided and again we want to we want to um, we want to basically use this projectile motion simulation and I'm going to use this video to kind of go through the assignment here and um, so we're going to use the what's called the intro so I'm going to click that and it's a pretty interesting program you see we have this cannon um, let me get rid of that thing quit there we, we've got this cannon and we can angle this cannon and we can we can fire it and we can see the trajectories etc Right now, that would be a type 1 trajectory, correct? And um, I can move this cannon kind of up and down, and I can form, you know, I can form a, uh, you know, I can form kind of a type 2, or I can form a type 3 trajectory, for example. And uh, so I'm going to kind of go over to here, and then kind of go back to here, and kind of do a few things. So the goal really is for me to kind of show you uh, show you an example type one that we're going to solve mathematically or with our equations and then what we can do is actually we can actually move the the you know bullseye around so for example I could put this kind of back up here and and I can fire this again and if we've if we've place the bullseye right if we figured out mathematically where to put the bullseye and then we when we move it there and we get a we get the bullseye we get just these little stars and then we're pretty happy and uh, so so let me just show you a little bit about the different aspects of this program here so first off you can change the projectile so you can pick any of these things and I don't really care what you what you fire you know you can fire a car if you want you know, biomo, and uh, and then we can show the vectors here. So we can look at. Let me go back. I think I was fi firing a pumpkin or something. I'll go back to the pumpkin, and uh, we can show the velocity vectors and the total velocity, for example. So let me go ahead and fire it. So we've got. Let me see here. So see, we've got then the VY, it's in free fall vertically, and then the horizontal velocity doesn't change. And then we, get, we can get the overall velocity vector. So that kind of is explained here. If we want to erase the trajectory, we can click that button there. That gets rid of the trajectory. Now let, let me unclick the velocity vectors. And let me act, activate the acceleration vector. So I'm going to click then the I'm going to click then the total and the components there, and then refire. 
So see, basically the only acceleration we have is downward. There's no forward acceleration. And um, it's in free fall going down for a second. So if we were doing this on a planet with air resistance, if I turn that on, then there's what's called a drag coefficient. And let me erase this again. And we would then see an acceleration behind. Um, so let me go ahead and hit fire here. Well, let me just go ahead and play it. So see, if we were going to have air resistance here, we would have a little uh, drag force behind or acceleration behind the object and, gra and gravity still acting down or free fall. Since we're dealing theoretically with these projectiles, we assume really, or we use uh, basically, uh, we basically are doing our problems mathematically, theoretically, and we're not going to have any sort of air resistance. So I'm going to unclick that and erase that. So that's kind of what we're saying right here, that basically we want to leave the air resistance turned off. Now we can change the initial velocity here with the scroll bar. And so we can have something go a little faster or go a little slower. So I was at 15, and let me go ahead and fire it. Let me go ahead and turn off the acceleration vector there. So that, that would be the range, or that would be the trajectory we get at 15. And now if I want to bump that up to maybe a little higher and fire it, you can see then that the object's going to go a little bit further. So that's kind of this this picture here. Above the cannon, uh, we have these buttons, and I don't know if you'll need these buttons, but we can, we can basically expand things or subtract things if we, if we have, a, if if we have a, a, you know, a lot of velocity there, we might need a little bit more space. You know, so we can kind of, we can kind of, make the make this a little bit uh, smaller or larger depending on what you need. Now a couple of important tools that we have here is we we've, we've got then this examiner and how this works you can pull it right down there and how this kind of works is you can place then the examiner on these dots and these dots basically represent like in this case it represents then a tenth of a second. So we can see kind of where the object is forward and its height at different um, at different points along the trajectory. So we can kind of, the one we just basically did, we can see the range was 37.12 and the height at that point would be zero in the time that it was in that trajectory. Now another thing that's kind of in, another tool that we can kind of use is the measuring tool. Let me kind of show you how to do that here. I'm not sure you'll need it or not, but you've got it here. So the measuring tool we can kind of put down below the cannon and then we can kind of we can kind of move this out. We can kind of measure basically measure how far and uh, you can see here that these two numbers correspond pretty closely if we have things matched up. And let me match them up a little bit better here. So match that up with the There we go. So anyway, that those are the couple tools that we can maybe use. I'm not sure you really need that. So let me basically show you kind of what we're going to be doing. I'm sorry this video is a little, little, little uh, chaotic here, but hopefully it makes kind of sense. So um, don't really worry, I guess, about that. That's basically explains kind of how to line up the tape measure. I'm not sure you'll be needing that. And this page kind of shows how we can how we can basically move the cannon at different angles and fire things a little bit differently with an angle. And that'll be important with type 
two trajectories. And we'll, for type ones, though, we'll keep this at zero degrees. And feel free to play around with this a little bit on your own if you'd like. But what we're going to do is we're going to kind of reset the program here. And here's kind of what I'm going to do here. I'm going to set up a type one trajectory. And it says here I'll do this with you. And I'm going to do this on this kind of video and my solutions really are on the next page. So I've reset the program. I'm going to keep the cannonball at a horizontal speed of 15. So I've got that set up here, 15. And I've got the air resistance turned off. And let me just go up and click cannonball since I guess that's the one I did. Although it doesn't really matter what you fling. So I've got a zero degree angle here. And I'm going to keep the cannon at 10 meters above the ground. So I'm not going to shoot it yet. I'm going to mathematically determine then the time aloft and then the range of the projectile and some of the other important information, the VX and the VY, the overall velocity, the impact angle, etc. Now I'm, I'm going to work the problem really on the next page and then I'm going to come back to the bullseye here. So here's what I'm getting when I work the problem. So again, this would be a type 1 trajectory and you may need to go back to your type 1 uh, notes, but to get the time aloft, we determine then that the cannonball is going to fall 10 meters below where it started. So it's going to be 10 meters minus 0 because it starts here, and we're going to call that a reference point. So the cannonball is going to, going to fall vertically 10 meters below. We don't have any initial velocity in the y direction, so this term is 0. And we're left then with negative uh, gravity, negative 9.8 times that half times t squared. And that's going to be what I'm going to solve for. And I do my algebra here, and I get a time of 1.43. Again, we can kind of check that with the examiner, which I'll do shortly. Well, the B part is the range. So the range represents then the time times the velocity in the x direction. Well, that 15 doesn't change. So I'm going to take my 15 times that time, I get around 21.45. That would be meters forward. Now, that x sub i is just 0, because we're calling this a reference point. So how far forward is just x sub f, and again, we call that the range. So I'm predicting mathematically that the object should go around 21.45 meters. Now I can get then the impact velocity, my Vx, again, that was 15, it didn't change. My Vy, because it's in free fall going down, it's going to change as a function of time. So that's just my Vi, y plus gt. Well, my Vi, y is, again, for type 1s, it's 0, because the object is just being flung horizontally. So I'll have negative 9.8 times my time, which I determine there. So I get then negative 14. Now that negative sign just means downward. So I'm showing that really with my arrow. So my two components of my velocity, these are my two legs, 14 down and 15 forward. And the overall velocity then is based on a Pythagorean theorem of those two. When I do that, I get around 20.5. And then my angle is represented a tangent. Again, make sure your calculator is in degrees and not radians. So when I do that, I get around 43 or so. Well, what we can do then is what I'm predicting is that I need to place my bullseye around 21.45. So I'm going to place my bullseye around 20. I can't do 0.45. I can do 21.4. I can do 21.5. All right, so let's just see if my mathematics is fine here. So I'm going to go ahead and fire the cannon. Hey, I got it. Not a bad deal. You see how that all kind of works? And uh, so when I put the examiner down here, oops, if I can. Yeah, there we go. When I put the examiner on that final point, I had predicted then in my, my math, I predicted 1.43 for my time, and there it was. There it was. 
Now, it gives me a range of 21.42, and I ended up getting a range of around 21.45, but again, there may be some, well, there's definitely some rounding, etc. All right, do you see kind of how that works? So here's what I'd like for you to do for your assignment then. So I'm going to have you change up then um, some of these, these attributes. I'm going to have you put the cannon at 20 meters per second. You're going to make sure, again, the air resistance is turned off. First off, you probably want to reset the program, and you're going to set then the cannon to 20, and you want to set then the height to 15, so you can just kind of do that, set it to 15. And so just work the problem then mathematically, determining the time aloft, the range, again, find your velocities, etc. And just kind of put your answers, well, here, hold on, I've got a sheet there at the end. So there's a, a page that, that you can kind of work, or you can do this on scratch paper and then submit it. But you want to then find, and I've got my answers here if you need my answers, my solutions. But you want to find really where to put the bullseye. And uh, you want to um, kind of figure it out mathematically and then, then put the bullseye there and see if you get that right, you know. And on that last page then is what I'd like for you to submit. And I want you to take a screenshot then of, of, of what you did here with this and your trajectory and, where, and then your bullseye. Take a screenshot of that. Now, I don't really, I mean, I, I, I mean, I'd like for you to get close to what you predicted, and maybe you'll get spot on, and that'll be good. But, again, I just kind of want you to play around with this program a little bit and see if you can. Uh, use then what, what's, what's kind of the key idea is that you can use mathematics and our equations to really predict where this object is going to land. And that's kind of what I want you to take a screenshot of. Does that kind of make sense? I hope that, I hope that makes sense here in this video um, by showing you this video that I just really want you to kind of predict, kind of predict um, using your equations where you should put the bullseye and then take a screenshot of your setup. And just put your screenshot kind of here and that'll give you credit for this assignment. Alrighty, I hope that helped. It's kind of a fun program to use. We'll talk to you later, kids. Bye.